Today on Resource Review, we're evaluating three resources for secondary science. One that's state-of-the-art, one old favourite, and one that's best described as state of the arc. They are a forensic DNA kit. That must be the first yeah, one. Yeah, that's the first one. So that's from the crime scene. Yep. Yeah. A molecular model system and a pile of old elephant dung. I really liked using the elephant dung example as some um, way of getting across the children the end product of digestion. Will they come up smelling of roses? Well, find out what our panel think here on Resource Review. Joining me to recommend today's resources is West Midlands Teacher of the Year, Tony Gray. Tony is an AST and Head of Biology at Kings Norton Girls School in Birmingham. On the panel, we have Mike Terry, Science Teacher at Alexandra Park School in North London, and Adrian Fenton, Curriculum Support Manager from the Association for Science Education. Welcome to you all. Tony, let's begin with Biorad's DNA fingerprinting forensic kit. Tell us about this resource. This is cutting edge science. This is the real wow factor. Uh, the theory of it is uh, current A-level AS syllabus, but it's something which kids of all ages will be interested in and grab by. And it really is the sort of thing that we need to be doing to get kids interested in science and wanting to do science further at university. Briefly then, tell us what you get and what you do with it. You get uh, six samples of DNA, uh, which you're going to cut up with a restriction enzyme, and uh, one of them is from the scene of crime, the other five suspects. They can look at this uh, electrophoresis run here, and they can decide who committed the crime. Well, let's see a class of super sleuths in action. We visited Dartford Grammar School for Girls to find out whether teacher Carol Williams and her class of budding forensic scientists can work out who done it. <laughs> OK. Well, good afternoon, Year 11. Um, in today's lesson, we're going to do something called DNA fingerprinting. In the lesson today, we've been using the BioRed Forensic DNA Fingerprinting Kit. In addition to the kit, you would also need a power pack and the electrophoresis uh, tanks to run the electrophoresis gels. So you would need other things as well. Prior to the lesson, we had pre-digested DNA samples from a crime scene. Those samples were digested using enzymes known as restriction endonucleases, and they break up the DNA into small fragments. The girls were given those fragments, which they then mixed with dye. The dye plus the fragments were then placed into wells in the electrophoresis gel and then an electrical current is passed from one side of the gel to the other, causing the fragments to separate. It's so hard to see, isn't it? But they have had 15 minutes. One of the problems that the girls encountered at the end um, was actually clearing the gels using warm water. Um, many of them actually broke their gels in that process, so whether that could be improved on whether we could put the, the gels back into trays to hold them more carefully, then many of them got to the end and they'd sport their gels by the time they'd finished. Yes, you can see the little lines. That must be the first yeah, that's the first. So that's from the crime scene. Yep. Yeah. And then the next one is suspect one, which was Kampala himself. Can you see which one matches up with the crime scene? They really did enjoy it, especially as the results were so clear. They could clearly see who had committed the crime. Galu was the murderer, so I wonder if he has now become the alpha male for his troubles. Well, Tony, what we've got here is the consumable aspect of the kit. You do actually need additional hardware, is that right? You do. You, you mustn't see this in isolation. Um, you need to have an electrophoresis tank, uh, you need to have micro pipettes, and you need to have a power source, although you may be able to use your physics department's high voltage source for that. Right, okay. Um, now, Biorad also advocates uh, a training day for teachers that comes in at £125, a kit included in that day. But overall, with the other equipment, it's quite an investment. It is an investment, but as I go back to my original point, this is cutting-edge science and it's worth making the investment, I think. 
Mike, what do you think? I would have thought it's something which could be really useful in the new applied science courses that are being offered because that looks at forensic science and it's the sort of activity which I think would really motivate young people. But I think it's expense and training, that's the, that's, that's the, the doubts in my mind. But it's also, you see, very good for using your sixth formers to motivate uh, students lower down the school. We'd use this as science club, open days. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what yeah. I was yeah. thinking, science week, perfect activity, yeah. perfect Adrian. activity. Adrian, let's bring you in. What do you think of this? I think um, it's quite right that it is a new cutting-edge idea. The one thing that I would say, I wouldn't quite have the confidence to pull off the kit being from a non-biological background. I don't think I could warrant the biology extending it to the real values that you can get out of such this resource there. So in that sense, if I had someone like Tony in the school I was at, then I'd be happy to run with it. But uh, me, me myself, as a, from a physics background, I don't think I could fully use it to its full potential. It's like you bringing out a lovely new piece of physics kit right, and me yeah. saying, well, I'm a new biologist, I can't handle that. And of course, within your school, you're going to have people who, who will Quite do right. that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But and I, I, I certainly think that as far as any decent, any, any biologist is concerned, that that's not going to be a problem. It's really just a question of the dynamics of things. It's, it's very professionally put together. The okay. training's good, the stuff works. But let's move on now to your second resource, Tony. It's something completely different, some elephant dung. So, <laughs> right. I mean, it doesn't need much explanation, but how does it work as a resource? Um, there's something slightly taboo about faeces. I mean, the whole word, nobody uses that word, do no, they? No, I don't. <laughs> but, but the kid's elephant poo, and suddenly, you've, through humour, you've debunked the taboo. You've also got rid of the snigger factor. And so you can talk about this in a sensible way. I use this um, when we're talking about energy flow. Uh, this is very abstract. But then you, you look at this thing, you see, and hang on a moment, what is that? Well, there's bits of tree, there's bits of grass, there's bits of Africa in there that... Um, and so then we bring another abstract concept, the ingestion, which nobody's ever heard of, um, which isn't the same as excretion. Well, what is ingestion? Well, you can see it's bits of tree and, and grass that the thing couldn't digest. So this is a great demonstration resource, really. Oh, oh absolutely, yes, for, for making abstract things concrete, yes. Well, to track down our own supply of elephant poo, we visited Colchester Zoo and education officer there, Jennifer Darby. Also visiting the zoo was Deborah Rook and her class from Alderman Blackshill School. Today we were at Colchester Zoo and we were having a look at the different kinds of digestion that happen in different organisms. Their specific resource was having a look at their poo and the end thought of their digestion um, and trying to identify what the organism had eaten. All of that meat into their mouth. The education officer went about by giving us an introduction and a PowerPoint all about the different types of teeth that organisms have and the different varieties in their diet that they have. We've got carnivores, herbivores and omnivores. Who can name me a carnivore? Leopards. Yeah, they're definitely a carnivore. The key messages they need to take home is how animals digest, what animals need to eat, how similar animals are to ourselves. Now, this is the fun part. You need to put gloves on because some of these models are pretend, some of them are not. I think they'll learn that animals are real and that it is a real part of digestion. By actually having, obviously, the elephants and the things you need here to get it, we can make sure they get a real hands-on experience. So what do we think of this one? It's very well mushed up. There's nothing in it. Can you see any bits in there? I think if you were just to use elephant dung, it would just have um, a lesson just from one angle. You do need to have the omnivore, the herbivore and the carnivore dung there so that you can make comparisons with the, the different types of fibres that they actually have in the remains. I really liked using the elephant dung example as some um, way of getting across to the children the end product of digestion. It was something that was slightly different from the scheme of work. It's something that they would have never have done before. They wouldn't necessarily go to the zoo and pick up poo and start analysing it. So it was not textbook at all. Uh, and it really did capture their imagination. Now this piece we have here very dried out. Are there any health and safety issues that teachers should be aware of? There's health and safety issues literally with everything and I'm not dodging the question there. You've just got to be sensible about things but it's not something I pass around the class. It's something that right. sits on my shelf of goodies, you know. Okay. Adrian, what do you think of the elephant poo as a resource? Um, it's 
good that it sparks off a lot of thought on, in a different way. I, and I'm thinking of all questions. How old is that? How long, how long can you keep it? Um, could you link it? How much do elephants produce compared to what they take in? Those sorts of things. It would be nice to know where you could go to get some of those answers as well, if there are websites and things. Mike, what do you think? Well, when I first heard about this, I, was, I had lots of reservations. Quite a lot of them I've, I've dropped, just having thought about it more today. Um, I think it, it would be best, though, if you had someone who was a kind of expert mm. coming into the school. So, again, it could be something where, if you've got a zoo nearby who's got an education officer, would they come in and put on some sort of activity like this? Or you've got to have someone who's a, a, a science teacher who really has a sort of gift of communicating and using something like that. Well, let's now move on to the third resource, which is decorating our table. It's the Molecular Models Molimod. Tony, this is, a, this is an old resource. Why are you recommending it to us today? Well, um, molecular models are an old resource. Some of them are awful. Um, some of them look superficially similar to this, but they've got steel springs, which are extremely difficult to use and shoot out into your eye at the least provocation. And I think a lot of people just have this and it sits on the shelf. One of the reasons I like it is that it is equally useful in Year 13 Organic Chemistry and in Year 7 Special Needs. Um, it is tactile, it's very attractive, it's beautifully made. Um, it appeals to visual learners, it appeals to kinesthetic learners. Um, and on a basic level where they're learning the difference between atoms and molecules and elements and compounds and mixtures. And this is such basic science that kids don't necessarily find easy um, and they can really get to grips with it. Um, Mike, Adrian, this is something that's been around for a long time, but this new Molimod pack, I mean, they do seem very tactile. Do you think pupils will respond well? Yes, and, um, and, and good teachers use them. I mean, even as something as simple as, as explaining about alkanes and alkenes and showing how the length of the chain and how the, the chain can be extended. There's one thing looking at a diagram in a textbook or even using an interactive whiteboard. It's completely different if you join these things up and then you begin to ask, well, why is a long carbon, you know, a hydrocarbon, why the long carbon chain has different properties than the short one? Adrian, this, I mean, it, it, it's just the model. Would you like to see this perhaps tied in with an ICT resource as well? I mean, it's quite limited, is it, just making <sighs> models? I think there's still a lot to be said for modelling things. You can get IT simulations. I was, uh, when we had this mentioned for this programme, I was, went to the website and was a little bit disappointed that they have got a case studies section. I was looking forward to seeing some of these brilliant ideas that have been shared here on the website, but they haven't populated that at all. So it's reminding teachers of the many ways that this can be used that's valid for having it included today. Well, thank you all very much. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we looked at were the DNA fingerprinting kit from BioRad Laboratories, Elephant dung from your local zoo or wildlife park, and the Molimod School Student Molecular Models from Spiring Enterprises Limited. For more information about all of the resources that we've talked about today, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to, email us resource review at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Tony to Mike and to Adrian. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.